Hey guys, Josh here with Fortner's Frontier Leather. So I just got done in the post office shipping out orders for Christmas. Uh, I have no open orders right now. That always feels good to have everything uh, cleared out and, and uh, I'm ready to take more orders now. So I stopped by Hobby Lobby because I run out of some daubers and some glue and stuff. So I stopped here to get some more stuff. Uh, and I ran into an older gentleman at the in the leather working section, uh, in the leather craft section. He was uh, looking at all the tools, uh, looking at everything real close. And I, and you don't ever see people looking at the leather working stuff, or at least I don't. You don't. You just don't run into other leather workers very often. Uh, it's just a craft that uh, I think it's very rare to actually know somebody else who does it, other than online. Uh, so I got to talking to him. I had to ask him questions. Hey. Have you been doing leather work for a long time? Um, you know, what kind of things do you make? So I just wanted to talk to him for a minute. To, uh, I was just excited to see somebody else looking at, at, at the leather craft stuff. And uh, he started asking me a lot of questions when he found out I did it as a business. Uh, he wanted to know if these tools were good enough, if that tool was good for this, you know, what kind of leather he needed to use, where do I get my leather. What I decided is I want to go home and back to the workshop and do a video for everybody who might want to get into leather work on basic tools that you may need. At first I thought, well, I'm going to do one on uh, the top five or ten tools, but then I realized, well, it really just depends on what kind of product you're going to make and if you're going to make a lot of them or you're just going to make one here and there for yourself. So I'm just going to do kind of a general video on all the tools that I use on a daily basis, all the tools that I think um, That'll, well, that'll basically serve you well for whatever you're making, whether it's belts, sheets, wallets, whatever. Uh, and so we're gonna head back to the workshop now and we'll get started. In the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and hit that notification bell so you know when we're uploading new videos. And be sure to tell your friends. Okay, so we're back in the workshop. We'll talk about tools. Um, obviously the first thing that you're gonna need and working with leather is something to cut that leather so you need a knife um, I've used more expensive name brand knives that are made specifically for leather craft and leather working and I just haven't had much luck with them uh, I prefer to just use a plain utility knife you can get these for what just a few dollars from any store uh, Lowe's I get get them from Lowe's like five bucks so you need a knife something to cut the leather with for sure uh, that's number one to me. Now the rest of the stuff is in no particular order. Um, I will try to talk about the things that I think you definitely must have. Uh, one is a knife. Two would be a probably an edge beveler. Uh, if you want to have you know nice finished edges, you should bevel your edges, kind of round them off. Edge bevelers cost about eight bucks at Tandy I believe so an edge beveler is number two I would say so we'll, we'll cover the kind of my must-haves uh, the three will be a uh, an edge burnisher actually after you bevel those edges you'll slick them down with a burnisher um, I think this is about ten bucks I don't think Tandy even sells them anymore so there's an edge burnisher your edge beveler your knife Obviously, you're going to need to stitch the leather, so you're going to need needles. I use John James needles. Um, they're made in England. They're known to be some of the best quality needles you can buy. They're, they're not that expensive. I got these on eBay. I think it was like $8 for a 25-pack. Um, there's lots of different needles you can use. Um, I use the John James. These are the needles that come in the kits from, say, um, like Hobby Lobby and places like that you can see the difference in the eye these are a lot bigger uh, these John Jane John James needles are a lot more slim and they they go through the, through your stitching holes a lot smoother and a lot nicer so if you want to you know make things a little easier on yourself I'd say go with the, go with the John James needles now with the needles of course you're gonna need thread um, I use a a thinner thread um, the stuff that'll come with your kits will be this thicker stuff you know you know and you'll use the these bigger needles uh, 
that stuff's usually really hard to get through the through the John James needles, which is why I use this stuff. But I think the the thinner thread and the thinner needles gives a, a, a nicer finished look. So you need needles, you need thread. Now to make your groove in the leather to keep your your stitching straight, you're going to need something to do that. Uh, you can use wing dividers. I use these a lot on smaller projects. Or you can use, um, where's that? Okay. A stitching groover. The difference is your wing dividers are going to make a line. It's going to just etch a line in that leather to keep your stitching straight. And the groover is actually going to cut a groove into that leather uh, where your stitching will actually set down in it. So it's up to you. Uh, wing dividers, uh, stitching groover. Stitching groover at Tandy is about ten dollars. Um, the uh, uh, I can't remember how much these were. I want to say this. The wing dividers are about sixteen bucks, I believe. So that's what you're looking at on that. Um, there's different ways of making your holes. When you make your line, you can use one of these, um, the name of them slips my mind for, for the moment. Um, an overstitch wheel, I believe is what they are. Uh, and you can basically mark your holes or mark the position for your holes. And just run it down that line you made, mark the position. And then to make the holes, you will need an awl. So uh, this is a C.S. Osborne awl. Uh, I think I paid 20 bucks for this. Uh, for this all, uh, C.S. Osborne is an old company. They've been around since the mid-1800s. I did have an all from uh, Tandy once, um, and one of the first few times I used it, the needle actually came out of the handle. So I switched over to a old and proven company, C.S. Osborne. Also have a, some, an old antique C.S. Osborne uh, all. This one's from 1905. Um, and I also have an overstitch wheel from C.S. Osborne, which is also from 1905. Uh, I really like C.S. Osborne. They, they have a long proven track record. Uh, now, once you have your line and you're, and you're ready to make your stitches, uh, whether you chose to use the wheel or not, uh, well, if you didn't, you can use what I use. It's a uh, diamond chisel set. I have the set. Uh, it basically has several different uh, uh, spacing of teeth and size teeth that you can that you can change out. And you will need that because you know if you have eight prongs or whatever, and you run to the end and, and that won't fit, you need something smaller to go around corners and such. So this diamond chisel set is fifty dollars from Tandy. Uh, it's worth it because a lot of people will want to use these um, actual hole punches and that basically just punches out a hole and it's usually they're usually entirely too big for your thread and your finished product looks sloppy so I don't recommend using these uh, you definitely should either use the wheel and mark the line or mark the line and then mark your stitches with the wheel or use chisels which, which is what I do now, if you're using very thick leather, you're not going to be able to punch through all of the layers. So then you want to go back with your awl and press them the rest of the way through. It really depends on how exactly you want to do your stitching. And um, I'll do another video uh, looking more into that. Um, now, if you're going to make a lot of belts or a lot of things that use straps, um, a strap cutter is definitely important to use. Uh, well, not important, but it's very helpful. Uh, it'll save you a lot of time and a lot of uh, wasted leather from your straps, getting your straps crooked. So you basically just adjust it to the, to the width you want. You'll need a straight edge, uh, a, a long ruler of some sort. You'll cut a straight edge on that leather. And then once you have your straight edge, you would basically run this strap cutter down it and it'll cut you out a, a straight strap. Uh, if you plan on making a lot of belts or a lot of straps, 
I would definitely recommend getting one of these. They are $30 from Tandy. Uh, also, another thing for making belts is you have your belt tip cutters, or your belt tip punches, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think these are about 45 bucks a piece. They have different sizes, different types of tips. This is an English tip, just your, your, your standard pointed tip that uh, you usually see on belts. That's what I use. Um, if you plan on using rivets or anything where you need to punch holes, you may need, uh, well, you will need a uh, some sort of punch to do that. Uh, they have these straight punch sets. The mini punch set is $10. This is from the, this is one of the maxi punches. I, I'm not sure of the price on those, but the mini punch sets are, are, you probably won't need the maxi punch sets unless you're setting really big grommets. Um, I would just go with the mini, the, um, mini punch set and like I said it's about ten dollars and that's plenty enough for for setting your rivets you have uh, holes small and small enough for and large enough for for any size rivets you may use uh, you can also use a rotary punch but some places you won't be able to reach with that rotary punch and you'll need to pull out that mini punch set so uh, I would definitely recommend getting one of those you can use a, a scratch all to, to mark positions on your leather and to trace uh, your your pattern out onto the leather. Now, of course, to use the punches, you need something to hammer those punches through. So, you need a, a mallet of some sort. Uh, I recommend the rawhide mallets. Uh, they have these at Tandy. I can't remember the price right off the bat, but uh, I've been using this one for many years, and it's it's kind of beat up, but it's still holding up for me. Um, let's see. Okay, if you're going to set rivets, um, you will need a, a rivet setter of some sort and, and an anvil to do that. Unless you're just going to flatten them out, uh, say like with a uh, arbor press. I have an arbor press over here I use sometimes if I don't want to make a lot of noise. Uh, but you'll need a, a, uh, a setter and an anvil and you just hammer that rivet and smash it into place. Um, let's see, I think that, well, you're going to need, um, uh, you'll most likely need some sort of, uh, needle nose pliers. These do not have teeth in them, so they don't eat up my needles, because sometimes the, the, your needles will get stuck in the leather, and you'll need to pull, pull them, pull them through. So I think that covers everything, um, but if I had to break it down, to, to the most basic things you need if you're not worried about making things that look really super professional you just want to make a few things here and there for yourself let's say you definitely need a knife um, some way of making holes you could go with this it's probably the cheapest option if you're not worried about it looking too fancy you can just stick with stick with these hole punches even though I wouldn't recommend it um, I would I would use the the chisels. So you go with a knife, you need a hole punch, you definitely need your needles, you need your thread. Um, I would go with the mini, the mini punch if you're gonna set set rivets. And I would still slick my edges no matter what to protect them. But I think, well, and you will also need um, a set of a, a stitching groover. So there you have basically everything you would, I would say you have to have to, to make, start making things out of leather to make it look decent. You need your knife, a way to punch holes for the stitches, you need your needles and thread, uh, you'll need a punch for rivets if you're going to use them, a way to slick and protect those, those edges, and a, uh, a stitching groover to make a line to keep your stitches straight. So that's basically an overview of all the tools. Um, that I can think of right now. Of course, there are many other leather working tools, but that's just a general overview and the basics. Uh, and I'll go into more detail in other videos on all these individual tools and how to use them. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, once again, please make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and turn on those notifications. See you next time.